Ontario has over 250,000 lakes and contains around one-fifth of the world's fresh water. Naturally, where there is fresh water, there is most likely fish, and this is definitely not an exception. There are 158 different species of fish in Ontario, and anglers all over the world flock here for its diversity and unique fishing experiences. However, in the most recent decades, many fish not native to the province have been taking over the waterways, affecting many native species and threatening ecosystems. In fact, the Ontario government has decided to fight against these invasive species, as they have cost taxpayers over $100 million a year, according to CBC. This documentary will focus on the fishing experience in Ontario and what fish we catch. Our fishing experience over the past few months have been interesting, as every trip featured a variety of catches as well as varying weather and water conditions, which also influenced our success. One location we found convenient was Progress Frenchman's Bay, a park in Pickering, where we were able to fish in Lake Ontario, a large lake which takes up almost 19,000 square meters of land. The fish inhabiting the area of Lake Ontario near this bay include many types of game fish, such as bass, pike, trout, and salmon. But other species, such as panfish, carp, catfish, and bowfin are also known to be there. There are many invasive species known to inhabit the Great Lakes. However, we do not observe numerous instances of fish, such as around Gobi, until around 2013. These fish live near the bottom of the lake and compete with other fish for resources. They are also known to eat the eggs of, and fry of many fish species. During the years from 2013 to 2014, there was a noticeable decrease in the number of sunfish, going from catching around 10 per trip to around two or three. During that time, we observed an increase in the number of carp in the bay possibly due to their diet on plant matter, or due to their status as a trash fish that anglers did not want to target. However, after two years, the average size and number of fish caught reached almost pre-2013 levels. In addition to this, since the gobies provided a new food source, many species such as the perch, bass, and pike have begun moving toward the shore, away from their previous habitats. In a different location, around 7 kilometers away, at a different fishing spot, there was a change in behavior. This location was more pressured, with people coming during spring and early summer in order to catch species such as salmon and smallmouth bass. The spot is located at the very bottom of the Rouge watershed, and it includes the mouth of the Rouge River and significant coastal wetland habitat under the Rouge Park management. The wetland feature is unique to this watershed, it provides shoreline protection, critical habitat to local wildlife, and refuge and spawning sites for many aquatic species. The diversity at the mouth and coastal wetland have shifted relatively little from past records, with a wide range of species being found here over the past five years of sampling. This includes emerald shiners, spot tail shiners, common carp, blunt-nosed minnow, brassy minnow, white sucker, pumpkin seed, northern pike, lake chub, bowfin, walleye, and goldfish. Some species that have not been present in, in very recent records, such as coho salmon and brown trout and common carp, are known to be in the Lake Ontario system and likely utilize this zone at various times of year, specifically for spawning activities. At this location, I was not able to catch as many fish compared to Frenchman's Bay. Additionally, most fish caught in this location were on average about 5 to 8 centimeters shorter than what was recorded at Frenchman's Bay. This area had large numbers of bottom feeding fish, such as carp and catfish, with a much earlier goby presence, 2010. However, due to recent flooding, observations for the year 2017 and 2019 will not be able to, were not able to be reported. However, there has not been a significant increase or decrease in the number of fish caught within the region. With reference to previous surveys, a total of 48 species have been recorded in this area over time, of which 22 of these species, including two invasive species, were collected during my fishing trips. Overall, 
The fish community reflects a diversity that is no longer common in most urban watersheds and is characterized by a predominantly warm water community. The presence of Rouge Park is recognized as a significant buffer against stressors of the adjacent urbanization. Many species absent for more than 20 years on public records, such as cold water habitat specialists, uh, the American brook lampe, red side dace, brassy minnow, and central mud, mud minnow have not been seen in this area. The transition from a cold water system found upstream to the warm water habitat in this section of the river is considered natural. However, fluvial geomorphic conditions may have changed with the upstream development, such that habitat survival specialists are less supported downstream. Within the transition zone between hot, between cool and warm habitat, there is a first order tributary that runs cold and another one that is cool when it flows. There are a small population of mussels that are present in the Little Rouge Creek. These are benthetic invertebrates that can be impacted by many of the same stresses that affect broader, the broader fish community. While there has not been a formal mus mussel study done by Rouge Valley, there has been small amounts of sampling to identify species present, presence and abundance. From this survey, only the middle portion of the Little Rouge has been identified as supporting a small population of freshwater mussels, which include species such as the cylindrical floater, creek heel splitter, heel spitter, common floater, and creeper. Although Ontario is a beautiful place to go fishing, there are many issues that people are not aware of. One of these major problems is the introduction of invasive species into many waterways. Invasive species are spread mostly by human interactions, as humans often travel the world and bring unwanted species with them. Although invasive species are a major problem in general, the spread of unwanted aquatic organisms is a major problem in the waterways in Ontario. Oftentimes, large ships carry these organisms in their ballast water. Ballast water is the water held in the ballast tank in ships and are used to provide stability to ships when they are not carrying cargo. When this water is discharged, it causes major problems as there are typically eggs and larvae of different species in it, which can threaten the existence of native species. Small boats often face this problem as they uh, carry aquatic organisms on their propellers, bringing them to new areas. The dumping of pet fish such as goldfish into waterways also exacerbates this problem. Some examples of invasive species in Ontario waterways include sea lamprey, round goby, and even goldfish. Another major problem regarding fishing in Ontario is the destruction of habitat and health. The destruction of habitat and health of fish is caused by human activity that mostly arises from the introduction of harmful toxins and pollution in various waterways. Most of this pollution comes from urban development and sewage released into Lake Ontario, making it the most polluted out of all the Great Lakes. Various fish found throughout Ontario waterways often contain elevated levels of toxins, making them unsafe to consume and can even threaten their existence. Because of the expansion of, of Toronto and the development of the GTA, there's a many aquatic habitats that have been created, such as the one behind me. These are often very well integrated with the communities that have been designed around them. These spots provide refuge for many native fish species in Ontario, but are also highly at risk because of their proximity to other polluting factors, such as the communities around them and highways and other streets. When this pond was first established, it was home to a healthy population of native species, such as bluegill. However, over the years, because of pollution and the introduction of invasive species, such as goldfish and carp, the pond has been reduced to a shell of its former self. These invasive species, goldfish and carp, turn up the sediment when they start breeding, breeding, and cause the water quality to dramatically drop, turning the water from crystal clear to this murky brown color you see behind me.
During the winter, salt from the road creates a runoff which leads into the lake, adding nitrates to the water and creating pollution. From our various fishing experiences and unique locations in Ontario, we have been able to record observations and compare them. The majority of caught fish belong in the invasive species category, such as goby. Evidence of human disruption, such as pollution and urbanization, were also imminent and detrimental to the habitat of the fish. Changes need to be made for humans and fish to coexist in a healthy and sustainable manner, and we hope this documentary can inform more people about fishing in Ontario. I've done that before. 